Hi, my name is Taya and I'm here to teach you a little bit about art history. In today's lecture, I'm going to be going through one of my favourite art periods, the Baroque. This period is known for its painting, architecture, music and poetry as they flourished through 17th century Europe. Encouraged by the Catholic Church, this art style has a rich story that I can't wait to tell you. The Baroque is a famous style of painting, sculpture, architecture, music, dance, poetry and other arts that was popular from the early 17th century to mid 18th century. Following the Renaissance and Mannerism, the Baroque was highly encouraged by the Catholic Church as a means to counter the Counter-Reformation and the austerity of Protestant art, music and architecture. Though you can see Lutheran Baroque throughout Europe, the Baroque is primarily known for artists' use of strong contrast, grandeur, exuberant detail, deep colour, movement and surprise, all intended to achieve a sense of awe from their viewers. The style began in Rome in the early 17th century before it moved rapidly throughout Italy, France, Portugal and Spain. Later it would spread to Poland, southern Germany and Austria. By the 1730s, the style would transform to a more flamboyant style known as the Rococo, which was common in France and Central Europe till the late 18th century. The English word Baroque is originally French, and some scholars believe the French word originated from the Portuguese term Barocco, which means a flawed pearl. Some others suggest it came from the Latin term Barocco, typically used in logic but eventually was utilised to describe anything that was absurdly complex. Some even associate the Latin word with excess, magic and confusion. By the 18th century, the word Baroque was associated with misshapen pearls and therefore often associated with jewellery. From the 18th century, it began being used to describe music and not in a nice way either. By 1788, the term was defined by the Methodical Encyclopedia by order of subject matter as a term used to describe an architectural style that is highly adorned and tormented. It wasn't until 1888 that a serious work was published on the style by Heinrich Wolflin titled Renaissance and Baroque, and it described the differences between the styles in relation to painting, sculpture and architecture. The Baroque architecture style derived from the Catholic Church's reaction to the Protestant Reformation at the Council of Trent. The Counter-Reformation's first phase imposed a strict academic style of religious architecture that only appealed to intellectuals, not the majority of churchgoers. At the Council of Trent, it was decided that they should appeal to a wider audience and they made a declaration that the arts should communicate religious themes simply, directly and emotionally. Baroque churches were designed to hold a large central space, a dome, and paintings on their ceilings. These were different from the painted ceilings of Michelangelo. The Baroque ceiling paintings were created in a way that allowed viewers on the floor to see the entire ceiling in the correct perspective, leaving the impression that the figures were real. The interiors of these churches became increasingly ornate with a focus on the altar. The most celebrated decorative works of the High Baroque include the Baldacchino of St. Peter and the Chair of St. Peter, both by Gian Lorenzo Bernini in St. Peter's Basilica in Rome. In order to create illusions, of which many Baroque buildings are known for, Baroque artists would use forced perspective, which involved making objects appear further away, closer, larger, or smaller than it typically is. Through the use of scaled objects and their correlation with specific vantage points, these architects would manipulate the human visual perception. A statue at the end of the Palazzo Sparta in Rome appears to be life-size, but it's actually 60 centimetres high. Baroque painters deliberately worked to set themselves apart from the Renaissance and Mannerism. They utilised intense warm colours with particular focus on utilising the primary colours within close proximity. They avoided the even lighting of Renaissance works, instead choosing strong contrasts of light and dark that would illuminate certain parts of the composition or draw attention to specific figures. Artists avoided the tranquil sense that was seen through the Renaissance, instead choosing to focus on movement, drama and emotion. They utilised asymmetry within their compositions in order to create a sense of instability. Their movement was enhanced by depicting costumes being blown by wind or moved by the figure's gestures. The focus of everything was movement, emotion and drama. The final essential element of Baroque painting was the use of allegory. This basically means that every painting told a story and had a message that could be deduced through symbols and allegorical characters. In Italy, Baroque artists would collaborate with Baroque architects on decorating interiors, 
A major painter for this was Pietro de Cortona, who painted for the palace of the Barberini family and worked on the largest frescoes at the Sistine Chapel. The most important figure for Baroque sculpture was Gian Lorenzo Benigni, who, under the patronage of Pope Urban VIII, created remarkable and monumental statues depicting saints and figures of immense emotion and realism. He would also produce fountains with groups of monumental sculptures that decorated the major squares in Rome. Roman statues were the main inspiration behind Baroque sculpture. There are a few main characteristics that differentiate Rococo and Baroque. Unlike the Baroque, the Rococo style involves an abandonment of asymmetry, though only partial. The works of the Rococo embraced graceful lines and curves similar to those seen in Art Nouveau, the use of flowers in ornamentation, the use of Chinese and Japanese motifs, and the use of warm pastel colours. The decline of the Baroque was contributed to by Madame de Pompadour, a mistress of Louis XV, when she sent her nephew on a journey to study Italy's archaeological and artistic developments. Accompanied by several other artists, they returned with a new passion for classical art. When he later became the royal director of buildings, he turned official French architecture towards the neoclassical. His contemporary, Nicolas Cochin, became a popular art critic, where he denounced the style of Boucher and called for neoclassical works. An influential figure of the Baroque era is none other than Caravaggio. This artist is highly praised through history for his realistic approach to the human figure, the way he painted directly from real life, and his mastery of chiaroscuro. The work Caravaggio created not only shocked his artistic peers, but completely changed the path of art history and the history of painting. Artemisia Gentileschi is known for being one of the most accomplished painters of the 17th century, producing professional work by the age of 15. Gentileschi became the first woman to be admitted to the Academy of Arts and Drawing in Florence. Her paintings predominantly featured women from the Bible, allegories and myths, and included warriors, suicides and victims. Elisabetta Sorani was an Italian Baroque painter and printmaker who was one of the first women artists in early modern Bologna and established an academy for other women artists of her time. Peter Paul Rubens was the most important painter of the Flemish Baroque style for his highly charged compositions, references to classical and Christian history, and his unique Baroque style that emphasised movement, sensuality and colour. The artist specialised in portraits, landscapes, history paintings and altarpieces. And that's it for the Baroque. Thank you so much for watching today's video. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more videos just like this.